Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Cool Oldies 1450 bringing you Frederick County High School basketball. And tonight, I'm Mike Reinick. I'm here with Coach Brian Burdett and Michael Bedridge. And we are bringing you the CMC Championship Games. We'll be here all night at Hood College, beautiful BB&T Arena. And uh, the first game, Coach, we got is going to feature the Williamsport High School out of Washington County taking on the Linganore Lancers out of Frederick County. And, uh, Coach, what can we expect? We're going to be starting here in a couple minutes. Well, Williamsport's going to look to get up and down the floor in transition. They can go way deeper than Linganore. But I tell you what, Linganore is getting uh, uh, the Spellman girl back. She's been off for two weeks with a finger injury, and she's one of their top defenders. So I look for her to go up against Paige Smith as well as Wilson, number 10. And I think that Linganore is going to come out and put some pressure in them to slow down that transition game, either going a man-to-man, -man, full court uh, defense, or a 1-2-2. Two, two. All right, and the Wildcats are coming in at 20-1. and one. Their only loss in the season to uh, Middletown. And as you said, they're led by Paige Smith and Amelia Robbins. And they have a 5'10 center, Cam Seltzer. And the Lancers, uh, under the tutelage of Rachel Easterday, uh, they're 19 and 3. They've had a couple of losses to uh, uh, Carroll County teams, uh, Westminster, Manchester Valley, and then Urbana was their only loss uh, within the CMC. Uh, Linganore uh, have had some really good teams in the last decade, but the Frederick teams uh, always were in their way of getting to this game. So uh, this is a new spot for them and uh, for Williamsport. Uh, you know, it's going to be a, a great opportunity to see who's going to take home the plaque that Coach Kevin Kendro, I think, is holding at midcourt right now. Linganore, very proud girls tradition with Coach Matthews that was there for years and right. turned out just juggernaut teams back in the 90s. Yeah. Uh, uh, now Coach Consuerga uh, was an All-American player and, uh, uh, you know, uh, her jersey hangs from the rafters at uh, uh, at the gymnasium there in, in Linganore. So well, we're going to get ready for the starting lineups. It looks like for uh, Williamsport starting lineups are going to be uh, Amelia Robbins, uh, Paige Smith, uh, Ellie Lassiver, Cam Seltzer, and uh, uh, let's see, who am I missing? Uh, no. Number 24, Emerson Shank. And uh, for the Lancers, it's going to be uh, Trinity Lindblade, uh, Meg Hummel, uh, Tristan Colburn, Julia Mitchell, and I'm not, can't see if I can see who the fourth uh, person is. They're at the opposite end of the court, but we'll make sure we get those to you. So uh, well, the, one thing I'm seeing, Coach, is I'm starting to see a lot of, a lot of black sweatshirts in the crowd here today. And uh, uh, this is going to be bananas by halftime of the girls' game. Uh, the boys' game is going to feature Walkersville and, uh, and uh, Frederick. And I think they are clearly the class of the uh, uh, 2A, I mean, uh, the, the Gambrels and the, uh, uh, I'm drawing a blank of the other division name, uh, but uh, probably the class of Frederick County. Uh, we, we probably haven't had this big of a boys matchup in years since Terrence Morris was probably at TJ and he had Curtis Cruz in him at Frederick with uh, that, that team. With, and Terrence was Hashim Alexander was on that team, but Curtis Cruz led that Frederick team. And I remember they had that double overtime game at Frederick back in the 90s. That's the that's the last big one I can I can remember with this much hype that this game's going to be on this second game. Yeah, and uh, you know Frederick is 20 and 0 coming into that game, or are they 21 and 0, one or the other? But, They're 20. Uh, Frederick's 22 and 0. 22 so, and 0, and they uh, uh, you know they Coach Hill really has a, a quality team there. Yeah, you know, Walkersville's already got their fans out. I, I, I don't, I don't suspect there'll be too many empty seats here. It's just gets no. into, it gets into the halftime. Don't let anybody know, but we're gonna have these nice, comfy seats up here. I think. So uh, there's the first starter for Williamsport, the Wildcats, number 24, Emerson Shank, the five foot nine uh, uh, forward. Uh, their next starter is number one, Amelia Robbins. She's a uh, senior at five foot five. She's followed out by number three, Paige Smith, a five foot six senior. Paige Smith averaging 22.7 points a game. 
Number 11, uh, Ellie La Lavazer. Uh, she's a 5'6 uh, senior. And then uh, that's the starting five for the Wildcats. That's a pretty impressive line there looking at Paige Smith, coach. 22.7 points a game. Uh, that's consistency to have uh, a scoring line like that. She's a four-year starter. She's like being a, another coach on the floor. She's real set up, settled. Her basketball IQ is very high. They're going to look to run. But they're going to need a bucket, and when they need a bucket, she's going to take the shot. She's just a class act. I've seen her play before. Just I've never seen her get rattled. Hey, uh, do, do you know what uh, her future uh, prospects hold? I do, I do not, but I'm sure she's getting some looks um, at, 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 at several schools, I'm sure. I don't know if it's a D1 schools, but D3 if for sure, probably some D2 sprinkled in there. I was going to say our colleague Coach Little may be in the stands here keeping an eye on some of the key players as well. Well, he should definitely keep an eye. He probably already knows about her. I would. Uh, let me jump in and uh, uh, let you know this tonight's game is sponsored by uh, it's a special guest sponsor of tonight's game Hawkins Landscaping Hawkins Landscaping loading located in Lewistown Maryland uh, they are 40 years of experience designing elegant and inviting outdoor environments Hawkins Landscaping award-winning the best of the best here in Frederick County one of the year's preeminent landscape scape installation and construction contractors and they, we want to thank them for sponsoring tonight's game. Best of the best, 2022 and 21 winners. We'll step aside for a break and go back to our broadcast crew up there on the balcony at Blazer Arena. We'll be right back after this break. Center of Life Chiropractic and Pilates, located on Water Street in Thurmont, serving the community since 1993. Center of Life is dedicated to treating the whole you, and not just your symptoms, back pain, neck pain, injury, or you just want to improve your mobility and feel healthier. Dr. John Hageman's innovative approach to whole body health is completely unlike anything you have experienced. With convenient hours from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. and 3 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and afternoon hours only on Tuesday from 3 to 7.30 p.m., Center of Life is there for you. Center of Life is closed on weekends and Thursdays. Center of Life accepts all major credit cards and uses the honor system so you pay what you can afford. What an amazing difference they will make in you today. Center of Life, make an adjustment to your life today. Center of Life is a proud sponsor of local high school sports. Jelco Plumbing and Backhoe Service LLC is conveniently located at 108 North Carroll Street in Thurmont with over 40 years of experience in the plumbing industry, celebrating its 10th year serving our community, specializing in all phases of plumbing, including septic installation and repair. The favorite part of our job is meeting new people and knowing that we helped. Jelco Plumbing prides itself on a job well done with pricing that won't flood your budget. Burst pipes, water damage, clogged drains, replacement, remodel, or upgrades. Kelco Plumbing services, most major fixtures, faucets, water heaters, sump pumps, and well pumps and pressure tanks. Kelco Plumbing is certified and licensed in Maryland and Pennsylvania. Call them today at 301 788 9791. That's 301 788 9791. Emergencies or planned repairs, Kelco Plumbing will go out of their way to explain exactly what needs to be done in simple, easy to understand solutions. When a plumber's work is done, well, everyone is happy. Remember, a good flush. Beats a full house every time. Kelco Plumbing is a proud sponsor of high school sports on the radio. At Thurmont Country Kitchen, one recent diner summed it up perfectly. This place is so good, the words are hard to find. It's a wonderful small town diner with awesome food and great service. Thurmont Country Kitchen is located on Water Street in downtown Thurmont. Open weekdays, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Saturdays, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And Sunday.
Days, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Remember when Grandma used to say, if you're looking for a great restaurant, follow the locals. And that's exactly what you'll find at Thurmont Country Kitchen. A wonderful mixture of -of out-of-town guests, travelers up and down Route 15, and the locals who love Country Kitchen's award-winning roasted chicken. Homemade cooking at its finest, with lots of sweets and goodies at the counter to go. Country Kitchen is a great place for birthday parties, meetings, or just to take the family when you're out and about. They're huge menu has something for everybody and their warm country home atmosphere and small town charm will take you back to simpler times Thermont Country Kitchen satisfying and delicious you'll feel right at home at Thermont Country Kitchen Thermont Country Kitchen is a proud sponsor of local high school athletics on the radio Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome back. This is uh, uh, Mike Reinick along with Coach Burdett and uh, Michael Betteridge, and we're here at BB&T Arena bringing, getting ready to bring you the CMC Championship game, the uh, girls' basketball version, uh, the Williamsport Wildcats against the Linganore Lancers. I'd like to thank Hawkins Landscaping, who's our... Uh, Special number one sponsor here today, uh, Hawkins Landscaping, uh, making this game possible for us to broadcast for you. Jump and tip, it looks like it's going to be uh, uh, Jessica Mitchell against uh, Cam Teltzer. And uh, one thing I'll say, uh, uh, Jessica and Cam are about the same size. Cam looks a little thicker, uh, you know, maybe going to be a little stronger underneath. See how this starts out. Tap controlled by the Wildcats, and Emily Robbins is going to bring it up against Trindy Lindblad. Robbins out way high to uh, Sel- Seltzer, who now goes to Lavasseur. Lavasseur goes back to the point guard, Robbins, who takes a short jumper. It's short. Tip rebound comes out to Mitchell. Mitchell to Trinity Lindblad, and here come the Lancers. Williamsport playing Paige Smith, uh, uh, Lingler playing Paige Smith blind, not letting her catch the ball on the defensive end. Lindblade gets it into Meg Hummel. Meg Hummel with the drop step, scoop shot, no good. Rebound comes down to Emerson Shank. Quickly up the court, Paige Smith for the Wildcats. Paige Smith goes up, block. Looks like she got fouled there, a lot yeah. of contact, no call. That's gonna see, let's see how that plays out for the rest of the game. Lindblade has it now in the forecourt. Lindblade goes to Colburn, getting pressured to Mitchell at the three-point line. Trin Lindblade for three, no good off the basket. Rebound to Colburn, no good. And the Wildcats have it. Here they come quickly out to number 11, Levasseur. Levasseur pulls up at the elbow, no good. Rebound comes down to Brace Wilson. Long shot, not used to having a wall. They know there's no wall behind him here is going to make a uh, difference. You're going to have to adjust to that. Depth perception is going to be different. Wilson now trying to go inside to uh, number five, uh, Meg Hummel, and uh, there's a foul over the back. Got a major put the physicality of the game already. Major push off by Lindblad on Williamsport, right in front of the Williamsport coach. Wanted a call, probably should have been a call, and they just let it go. You're going to let them play a little bit here. Mackenzie clues into the game for the Wildcats, the first substitution. Lindblade triggers an inbound to Colburn. Similar to the other end, a lot of contact, nothing getting called early. Quickly down court, the Wildcats, shots no good. Rebound comes to Mitchell, kicks it out to Colburn. Colburn in the forecourt, slows it down, now goes to Lindblade. Lindblade met by Robbins immediately. Lindblade to the elbow, trying to drive. Throws up a shot, no good, wild shot. Linganore forcing a lot of shots early, panicking, not getting anything in rotation. They set a couple screens, but whoever's got the ball coming down, they make one pass and shoot it. Only good shot they got was off of inbounds play. Clues triggers to Robbins, who brings the ball inbounds. Robbins bringing it up. As you said, they're playing kind of a kind of a no-help defense with the person guarding Paige Smith. Smith with it out now at the top of the key against Mitchell. Now switch to Meg Hummel. Page drives down the center. She's blocked by Mitchell. Loose ball on the floor, picked up by the Wildcats. Robbins driving with seven on the shot clock, puts it up and in, our first basket of the game. Nice up and under move. Two nothing Wildcats. 
Lancers bring the ball up with uh, Lindblade trying to trigger. It looks like they're setting up kind of a flex offense here. Go to Jessica Mitchell who drives right down the center of the lane. Up and good and a foul. Defense opened up there, but once again, it's got me concerned. One pass, at least they drove the lane, but one pass and they're taking a shot. And as you said, Williamsport's going to go to the bench quickly. Number 22, McKenna Weaver into the game. She replaces uh, Cam Seltzer. Uh, Seltzer with one foul and uh, uh, Shank with one foul. Mitchell's free throw is up and good. 3-2 Lancers. Robbins bringing it up on Lynn Blade guarding. Trying to get it in the post to Smith. They get it down low. She's being guarded. Nice up and under move. Well, maybe an extra time. Got the, got the back screen coming down. Easy layup. And 5-4 Lancers take the lead. In the forecourt, Paige Smith with the ball being guarded by Colburn. She's getting trapped in the corner. Is able to get it out. Number 22, McKenna Weaver at the three-point line. Getting pressured by Meg Hummel. Finds the back cut by Robbins. Nice finish. That was a nice back cut. Uh, the, you know, Lancer doing a lot of overplaying, so there's going to be yep. uh, that ability to uh, back cut and go to the basket. 6-5. Yeah, they're, six, six, they're looking. Paige Smith is getting everybody's attention. They're going to have to do that, but they still got to be aware, uh, aware of everyone else. And uh, the overplay by Williamsport leads to a ball out of bounds and uh, turnover Lancers. Coach Easter Day just telling her team to settle down. She can see it. They're not playing like their self right now. Nerves might be a little bit of a factor. Robin is pushing it. Goes wide. Basket shot up. No good. Gracie Wilson, but a foul. Always had a rule, man. Lingenhorst made two turnovers coming down. I always made a rule when I was coaching. If we got three turnovers, no shot hits the rim, I'm going to get a timeout, see what the heck's going on. They went to the basket, got a foul. Yeah, I think Lingenhorst is going to have to show some patience and, as you said, try to get to the basket, try to work some things otherwise. Okay, Paige Smith back into the game. Into the game also, Levasseur back for Wildcats. For the Lancers, number 23, uh, I think actually that might be a young Kaylee Lake, who's normally listed on this as 40, number 23, Kaylee Lake into the game. Lake the sophomore. Cluse is going to run the point now. They're running a three-man weave at the top. They try to get it to Smith. Smith, who's cutting, coming around. Make Hummel comes out on her, and she's able to get it out. Quick outlet pass by Lindblade, and there's an... Offensive foul on Meg Hummel on the push off. You can't, you can't undercut when somebody's like that. And then you, you, she ran in front of her and then slowed her uh, uh, close, uh, slowed her uh, from Williamsport yeah. slow down. And then she did push off, but you can't undercut a player right. like that. Yeah, there, there wasn't like she had uh, established any type of position on the court. Williamsport in the four court. Paige Smith dribbling to her left. Nice defense by the Lancers. They go to Levasseur, who drives to her left. And there's going to be an offensive foul on the pick. Fouls on number 13, Cam Seltzer. That's her second foul here early in the game, I believe. Maybe that's a makeup call. <laughs> I, I, I will say, uh, Coach, Coach Murphy is going to get a, a workout here today. He is an animated guy on the sideline. Oh, yeah. Substitution uh, extravaganza continues. Laurel Hudson in the game. Robbins back in the game for the Wildcats. Seems like his Williamsport plays off of his intensity, though. They really, they really crank it up a notch on D when he does that. Once again, not a good entry pass by the Lancers. Stolen by Robbins. Robbins brings it up, and they're going to set up a... Uh, Front court, half court offense. Robbins gets it off a ball screen. Nice pickup by Lake. Rebound comes down to Meg Hummel. Hummel kicks it outside to Gracie Wilson. Gracie Wilson, or I'm sorry, Bowers kicks it up. Bowers takes it to the basket. As you said, makes something happen. That's they call a block foul. Five last five possessions, three turnovers, and then two fouls. And the two fouls were taken to the basket. Anything else, 
it seems like their offense is just, just it, it doesn't have enough patience yep. if they can't get anything in transition. Jessica Mitchell uh, back in the game. Oh, that was a non-shooting foul, they're saying. So Lindblade will trigger the inbound, and on the inbounds is a, a turnover. Lancers really have to settle down here. Now, one thing I'll point out, Coach, uh, uh, we're two minutes left in the first quarter, and the Wildcats have five team fouls already. So the Lancers may have some opportunities here at the foul line. In the forecourt, running a weave, Lavasseur looking for a post up by Smith, who's yelling for it with uh, Lake on her. Lake taller than her, not as quick as her, but does a nice job of moving her feet. And they call a foul on Lake on the reach in. Probably a good call. If she could have just stayed at her position vertical, she probably would have not had the foul call. Definitely a foul there. Got a lot of body, but she's gotten hit two or three times and they let that go. go. So then the only thing you want as a coach is just being consistent. At, um, and that's what will drive both of these coaches nuts if that's not the case. But she definitely got fouled. Paige Smith makes the first free throw. She's looking at her, uh, her at the free throw uh, foul line here first three times. She's not going to miss too many. No, she's got it. She's got a nice, uh, nice stroke. She's a uh, she's quality season player. And it now is 8-5 Williamsport. Mitchell gets it over to uh, Bowers, who's serving as the point guard right now, trying to get Lindblade some time off the ball. Mitchell goes to Lake. Going back to the flex. Lindblade comes up back to the top. Lindblade from way outside. No good. Great box out by the Wildcats. No Lancer can get to the board. Rebound to Lavasseur, who gets it back to Robbins. Here come the Wildcats into the front court. 119 remaining. Oh, nice fake on the ball screen. Can't make the shot, though. Bowers with the rebound. Bowers looking deep. Has the outlet pass to basket by number 21, Kalen Spellman. Nice assist by Bowers, keeping her head up. Good outlet transition bucket an offense, not, not having those turnovers or, or throwing up those threes. Almost another turnover there. Bowers back cut to Colburn. Colburn with the scoop and the basket. Number 11, Kaylin, or number 11, Tristan Colburn makes it. The shot fouls on number 11, Ellie Lavasseur. And uh, Coach Murphy bringing in Paige Smith and uh, Laurel Hudson quickly. That is the 16 foul with 36.8 seconds remaining. Uh, two fouls on uh, on Hudson, and she's coming back in the game. You'd hate in the last 36 seconds, but they're on the offensive end. Hopefully she won't get another one in the first quarter. Paige just got hit in the face here and I. Fouls on uh, Jessica Mitchell on the reach in on the rebound. Uh, Paige. Definitely got poked in the eye. Yeah. They poked her in the right eye. She's going to come out. Hopefully that doesn't uh, put her out for, for a minute. Uh, Make Hummel is going to return for uh, Mitchell. For Mitchell, that was her, uh, I believe, her first foul. Close coming back in the game for Williamsport. Full court pressure this time by the Lancers, kind of more token than anything. Bowers is going to gr uh, guard Robbins. Robbins, for the most part, can run the clock out here. No half court violation in the high school game. Robbins still dribbling. She's been dribbling for 20 seconds. Goes to the cutter. Ooh. Laurel Hudson went up, and her body moved in a lot of different ways, and the whistle was a little bit delayed, but they got the foul delayed. on the shot. The bad thing is, as I know, <laughs> probably because I used to ref, guy underneath the basket's making that call. It should have been a C. That's like the only way he does not know that is from I used to ref. So that's why the delay in the whistle, he was hoping to C would get it and had to get it underneath. That was on Emma Bowers, her first, the fifth team foul. Lindblade back in, and uh, Hudson is shooting the second free throw, made the first, number 11, Lavasseur getting ready to come back in uh, for Hudson, trying to protect from, she doesn't get that third foul. Misses the second, offensive rebound, and the Lancers luck out. They miss it, point blank underneath. Lindblade brings it up with four seconds left. Lindblade throws it up, a lot of contact. They're not calling it, and at the end of one, nine to nine, Lancers and Wildcats tied. Coach, what do you think about that first quarter? Linganore's got to have some patience on offense. They're letting them play, being physical. We've seen a lot of fouls, and they've called a lot of fouls. 
So the girls are going to have to adjust. The referees are conferencing up. I'm sure they're having that discussion right now how they're going to play Continue out the rest of these it. third quarters because they can see that happening. They don't want to be part of the game. All right, let's take a quick break here. Uh, cool Oldies 1450 bring you Frederick County High School basketball. <laughs> Plenty of commitments. That's why Anytime Fitness is the perfect way to stay in shape. From either home or work, Anytime Fitness at Thurmont is always close by, and they're open 24-7. They can tailor a personalized training program to fit your workout needs. Anytime Fitness can also fashion a membership and payment plan that will be flexible enough for your on-the-go lifestyle. You'll love the 24-hour co-ed fitness center with state-of-the-art equipment designed to sculpt and tune you into shape. And when you're away from the Thurmont area, your membership guarantees you access to any of the over 1,000 clubs worldwide. Visit us at 130 Frederick Road to start your program today. Now you can stay healthy anytime with any time fitness. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back at PB&T Arena. This is Mike Reinick along with Coach Brian Burdett and Michael Bedridge, and we're bringing you the CMC Girls Championship game. At the end of one, it's the Linganore Lancers 9, the Williamsport Wildcats 9, and the Lancers are triggering the ball inbounds. Trinity Lindblade in with Colburn, Hummel, Lake, and Bowers. Colburn drives the basket, and they call an offensive foul. Number 11, Ellie Lavasseur stepped in and took that. That was a good cause made by Elon Bush. I'm sure he's going to have interest in the next game. He played at Frederick High, so I'm sure he'll stick around. Uh, that was a, uh, a second foul on Tristan Colburn. Coach Eacher Day uh, chooses to lead Colburn into the game. Robbins to Lavasseur. Back pick trying to get Robbins open. Goes to number 24, Emerson Schenk. Shank back to Robbins at the three-point line. Get to the Paige Smith at the top of the key. Off the rim, no good. Rebound comes down to Shank. Tries to go inside to Smith, no go. Kaylee Lake gets the ball and throws it into the Wildcats bench. Right idea, just, just poor execution in the throw, but that's how they want to get their buckets. Paige Smith, they don't want her to catch the ball. Coach Murphy ran her off two screens to get her the ball and get a shot off that, that time. Smith in the three-person weave at the top. Goes to Lavasseur, trying to get Smith at the low block, and they do. Colburn on her. She shuffled her feet again. The taller player was on her, and I think she went to turn originally to take the shot and then realized that uh, she was going to face some pressure. Lancers with the ball. Meg Hummel triggers to Trindy Lindblade. We've got a uh, kind of a motion set here. Lake with it at the top of the key to Lynn Blade, looking inside to Meg Hummel. She has inside position, drops it, loses it, blocked by Emerson Shank. Shank to Robbins. Robbins with her head up, coming up court. Goes in the corner to Lavasaur. Lavasaur drives baseline, gets it inside, blocked by Lake. Lake with the rebound, kicks it out to Trindy Lynn Blade. Lynn Blade in a foot race with Robbins. Lynn Blade shot up, no good. Rebound by Lake, running the whole court, can't make the shot. Ball comes down to Robbins. Wow. Crazy up and down to Lavasaur in the front court. Lavas and that's the seventh team foul in the Lancers. We're going to be shooting one on one. Even though Linganore didn't hit those two layups in transition, the possession before, at least they had patience and got a good look inside with Hummel down the low post. She just didn't get the shot to fall. If they stay with that in their half court set and then take transition when they can get it, then they're, I think they'll pull this game out. Number 35, Kaylee Andrews into the game for the first time for the Lancers. Two fouls on Hummel. First shot by uh, Ellie Lavasseur is good. Coach, uh, something I'm noticing, the uh, team from uh, Williamsport is extremely good at the foul line. I think they've made five of six at this point in time. Lavasseur again, nothing but net. 12-9 Williamsport, sorry, 11-9 Williamsport. 6.25 remaining. Coach animated on defense, see what they do here. Linganore's got to have some patience. I like it, I like the early patience. Bowers to Lindblade. Lindblade trying to drive, loses control, goes to Lake. Lake puts it on the floor into the center of the key. Kicks it outside, three-point shot. Gracie William, Wilson, 10 passes probably that time in the front court. Took their time, got something. Paige Smith drives, pushes off a little bit. Nice pass down low. Can't make the shot. Rebound to Colburn. Colburn pushing up to Lindblade. Lindblade drives up in the air. No shot, no good. Rebound on the floor. Scramble. 
It's going to be a tie-up, and it's going to belong to Williamsport. Lynn Blades got to recognize there's two defenders down there. They got back on D, nothing in transition. Go back, go on a little run, and they should have had patience there. One thing I'm sure that uh, Coach Murphy's really stressed is getting back on defense, and the Williamsport Wildcats are doing a good job of that. And uh, the, at this time, the Lancers are going to take a quick timeout. Coach used to settle down 30-second timeout. Uh, we're going to stick around here. Uh, when uh, when when people, if they're watching from home, what they sh should be seeing right now is that Linganore's offense is really the transition game. But what we saw in the last time, if they can have the patience to run their half-court offense, they can get themselves some good shots. They, if they have the patience, and we've been saying that for, since the very first possession, if they do that, they've been able to get a good look. Take the transitions when it's there, but when there's two defenders down there, Lynn Belay got in a hurry, turned the ball over, and that's what's happening. They Just take, your, take what they give you, and if they get back, then run your set. And, uh, you know, i got to be honest with you, uh, Coach Murphy's got to be feeling pretty good. They're uh, down by one, but Paige Smith has four points. So if, the, if she gets going, the Wildcats uh, have a good opportunity here to put a run together. Robbins in the forecourt, trying to get it to uh, Emerson Shank. Robbins drives the whole way baseline, kicks it out to Lavasseur, to Paige Smith, who loses control again. Ball's going into the backcourt. It's going to be not a backcourt violation because it was tipped by the Lancers, but there's only five seconds on the shot clock. Robbins drives. Paige Smith from 35 feet doesn't hit the rim. Shot clock violation. Paige Smith getting a little, having somebody face guard you the whole game for players uh, is a strategy I use. And a lot of, if you're not used to it, it's going to drive you crazy. They just need to give her screens and she's going to get open looks. Lancers with the ball up by one. Five minutes left in the second quarter. Trinity Lindblade. Dribbling in the front court, getting a lot of pressure. Still with the dribble, gets around to the wing, misses the shot, no good. Rebound comes down to Paige Smith. Paige Smith is looking up, she's gonna bring it up herself. Smith against Bowers. Smith drives to her right, crosses back over to her left, goes in the corner to Weaver. Weaver, three point shot, in and out, no good. Carrie Lake with the rebound. Lake gets it to Colburn. Colburn back to Lake. Lake wants to get that to Lindblade and here are the Lancers now are going to set up their flex offense. Lynn Blade might get a five second violation. She drives down. Scoop shot, good. Once again, I uh, think maybe she should have pulled up, taken the short jumper or something like that, but goes to the basket with the scoop. Up by three, Lancers 14 11. Paige Smith goes to Lavasseur. Lavasseur drives on Lynn Blade. Little jump stop, Euro step travel maybe. Lavasseur off the glass and good. Lynn Blades getting in a hurry taking these shots, even though the last shot went. I don't I think I would have been like, oh no, good shot. Push off on push off on 11. That's gonna be a foul on uh, Tristan Colburn. That's her third personal foul. She flipped the she flipped the ball out of bounds. Lucky the referee had the good sense, didn't give her a technical, just threw it out of bounds and didn't he didn't lose his cool as well, just re realizing the stakes of the game. Okay, so Smith is going to take a break, and Robbins is back in. Also coming back in, Laurel Hudson. For the Lancers, uh, uh, the Lancers right now have Emma Bowers in the game, along with Gracie Wilson. Uh, they're going with uh, Delaney Andrews, Lake, and Lindblade. Weaver from three. Off the glass, no good. Rebound comes down. Two. Bowers, Bowers driving the length of the court. A little out of control as well. Got bumped a bit, but referee didn't give it to her. Good no call there. I, I wouldn't have went with that one either, but like I said, they got to recognize that they're back and you don't have a good angle. Uh, we had uh, we had 13 fouls in the first quarter. We've had uh, one here in the second quarter. So uh, you said the referees got together. They calling it a little, uh, little, letting it go a little bit more. In the forecourt, Robbins goes to the corner. Out to number 14, no good. Rebound coming down, controlled by Hudson. Hudson to Robbins, shot, no good. Rebound to the Wildcats again. They dribble back out, they go back to Robbins. Robbins kicks it wide to Clues. Clues to Robbins, back to Delaney Hudson. Nice head fake by Clues. Shot blocked by Lake. Ball on the floor, who's gonna get it? 
Jump ball, this possession will belong to the Lancers. Comes back, Easterday, soon it, Coach Easterday, as soon as Paige says, Smith goes in, she brings in either uh, Selman, Selman or Wilson. Or game, Wilson. Yeah. So they can guard them blind. So that's their assignment, and that's, that's what I figured going into the pregame, that she would have somebody guarding them blind. So unlike a box and one, the other people are still playing man-to-man. -man. They're just not maintaining that help position on the one person. Lynn Blade goes to Spellman. Spellman looking inside to Mitchell. Gets inside to Mitchell. Mitchell goes up and is fouled. Undercut by number 11, uh, uh, Ellie Lavasseur. It's been a lot of contact, and you go, I, I don't know. I mean, that's always a judgment. you got to protect the shooter. That's uh, Lavasseur's second foul, seventh team foul. Mitchell's first shot up and good. 15-13. This is a low scoring game, coach. I expected it to be a little higher scoring than this, but uh, there have been a lot of turnovers. A lot of turnovers. The first couple of shots with the with the no wall being behind the baskets making a difference. Just right there, you get an air ball on it. You, you, I know some of that stuff makes a difference. All right, back in the game for the Lancers is a number four, or in the game for the first time for the Lancers is Number 45, Madeline Porter. Madeline Porter coming in the game. So the Lancers have gone about 10 deep here in the first half, but that's been necessitated by fouls. Robbins goes to the corner to Clues. Clues up top to Weaver. Weaver to Robbins. Here comes Paige Smith off a double screen. Shoots from the top of the key. Didn't have her feet set. Rebound comes down. That's a, that's a quick whistle. Jump ball belongs to Williamsport. That was a pretty quick whistle on that uh, long rebound. I'll tell you what, Paige Smith looks like she's hurrying herself too. Uh, that ball, uh, that didn't have a chance when it went up. She's getting frustrated, be getting face guard. That's gonna, that, they, she's just gonna have patience. They're rubbing two screens for her now. She just now just has to take a dribble and I think she'd be better attacking the basket off she comes off the screen. Robbins triggers it to Weaver. Robbins uh, now uh, goes to Clues, Clues to Paige Smith. Smith kicks it back to Robbins. Robbins goes up, partially blocked. Ball taken down by Jessica Mitchell. Brings it up herself for the Lancers. Mitchell goes down low to Bowers. Three-point shot by Jessica Mitchell. No good. Rebound comes down. It's going to be another jump ball, and this one belongs to the Lancers. Coach starting to look like a middle school game here. <laughs> a little bit. Paige Smith, when they ran a little weave, she took three dribbles. I thought she was she had the lane, and then she kicked it back out. I thought she was going to drive in, and that that's what I would have had her do. I'm sure her coach will tell her to do that. Lynn Blade triggers to Hummel. Hummel down low to Lake. Lake up and good. Foul on number 22, Michaela, McKenna Weaver. Nice set play on the uh, inbounds by the Lancers. Help, came, help side came over. She recognized the double, gave her a nice bounce pass down to the block off the window. Bucket in foul. Eight team fouls on each team. Kaylee Lake, the sophomore for Linganore, goes up with the jump, or free throw, no good. Rebound comes down to Spellman. Spellman to Lindblade, a deep three. Banks it in. Lancers lead by seven, 20 to 13. Robbins bringing the ball down court on Bowers. Paige Smith fires it to the top of the key. Back to Robbins. Robbins resetting the offense at the top. 14 seconds on the shot clock. Lancers are switching on all screens. Robbins now with Meg Hummel on her. Hummel puts her hands straight up. They call it travel. Tried that up and under move that she got one other time. They look to give Paige Smith the ball, try to run a couple screens off her. Spellman's glued to her. She's not giving her any space. They're calling out the screens. They're not switching on the screens on Smith. Right. And it's and it's causing uh, uh, the other Williamsport players are going to have to score. With under a minute left, Lancers in the forecourt. Spellman with it. Spellman to Lake at the top of the key. Lake goes to Lindblade. Shoots another three-pointer from almost the same spot. That one is short. Goes off the rim. 54.8 seconds remaining. 13, uh, 20 to 13, Linganore. That's when you want to have patience. You're going on a run. You went on. You hit a three. You hit a three-point play. Now you can put a little bit of space, man. A team going down at halftime, being down ten or more, is is a, a morale hit. Right. Especially because they they were once winning this game. I think 13 to 11. You know. So Robbins brings it down. She's getting pressure. They go down on the post to Smith. Smith with a little turnaround. Can't get the roll. 
40 seconds left, 30 on the shot clock. Lynn Blade bringing it up. Lynn Blade goes to Spellman on the wing. Spellman out to the top of the key to Kaylee Lake. Kaylee Lake drives baseline. They call another jump ball, and this jump ball, I believe, belongs to Williamsport. So we're down to 27.8 seconds left, a single possession left. Lancers are going to hurry up and get uh, Gracie Wilson back in. So it's going to be Wilson, Spellman, Lake. Took out, took out, no, they took out Spellman. They brought in Wilson to go blind on Paige Smith. So that's the strategy right there. And it's, look, she's ours. Paige Smith's already bending over. She's tired because yep. of how hard she's having to work on the offensive end. And Spellman is actually down now guarding the point guard, Robbins. Oh, my, my bad. That's all right, no, and, uh, but Lancer's putting two of their best perimeter defenders out there at once. Robbins brings the ball up court. Spellman guarding her, funnels her towards Lake. Goes down on the post. There's a travel wing violation with 9.4 seconds left. The Lancers have a shot. And they're going to quickly run Tristan Colburn, who has three personal fouls back in. Colburn's got two of those fouls on the offensive end, though. She's got to be a little careful. Taking Spell Spellman out. Keep her fresh. Her, her and Wilson fresh for Paige Smith. They're going to they're gonna end up just trying to wear her down. Lindblade in the front court. Lindblade Lin drives to the elbow. Fires up kind of a fadeaway shot at the end of the at the end of the quarter and the score after two, Linganore Lancers 13, Williamsport Wildcats, or 20, Williamsport Wildcats 13. We're gonna take a quick break and then we'll be back and give you a first half analysis. News, weather, traffic, school delays, and cancellations. At Cool 1450 AM, one of our most important resources is frederickscanner.com. Live traffic cams, weather cams, city and county resources, police, fire and rescue. Anyone living, working, or traveling in and around Frederick should bookmark frederickscanner.com on their PC or go to their Facebook page and download the mobile app today. frederickscanner.com, a live information window to Frederick County. People's Restaurant? It's the diner, and you won't find a better one than the Mountain View Diner. It's the ultimate comfort food. From delicious appetizers to sandwiches to succulent entrees, the Mountain View Diner can satisfy any taste. If it's mouth water, the diner will not disappoint. And don't forget the famous cheesecake. Mountain View Diner on West Patrick Street in Frederick and in Charlestown, West Virginia, across from the casino. A winner three years in a row for a Best of Frederick Award. The people who love great food eat at the People's Restaurant. The Mountain View Diner. Cool Oldies 1450 THU is the leader in high school sports broadcasting. Since 2008, we have broadcast more high school sporting events than any radio station in the four-state area. Football, basketball, baseball, and softball. Regular season playoffs and state championships from Southern PA to Brunswick, the Western Mountains of Maryland, to the Eastern Shore. Cool Oldies 1450 THU is number one in high school sports broadcasting. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to bb t Arena. This is Cool Oldies 1450, and this is the CMC Championship game being brought to you by Hawkins Landscaping. Hawkins Landscaping is providing the sole sponsorship of this event, and we thank them very much. This is Mike Reinick along with uh, Coach Brian Burdett. Michael Betteridge is with us. And Coach, at the half, we have the score. The Lingnor Lancers 20, the Williams uh, for Wildcats 13, and we set it and to be kind of nice pretty sloppy first half pretty sloppy indeed but i think some of that has to do with coach easterday and how she's going with spellman and wilson on page smith and it's got them out of a flow so in the second half coach murphy he's running her off screens and she's settling for those threes if he tells her to take three or four dribbles and get to the basket i think they're going to have to foul her on the linganore side if they have patience on offense and then they got that run where they got like five out of seven possessions was a turnover. If they have patience on offense, they'll be able to score. 
And Coach Easterday has to tell uh, Lindley about a shot selection. And just sometimes a coach, you like a good shooter is always they shoot it from the parking lot. Right. They think they're open. And sh- shooters got to shoot. I get that. But there comes a time and place where the shot, shot selection needs just to be a little bit better. And I think this seven point lead could be up over 10, which would really hurt the psyche and confidence of Williamsport. Seven points in basketball is nothing. It's three possessions. Right, and so so uh, Paige Smith has four points all on free throws, has not made a basket in this game. So from that perspective, Coach Murphy from Williamsport is probably sitting there thinking to himself like, hey, guys, relax, we're good. You know, we are, we are going to score more than 13 points in the second half, and now we just got to keep up our defensive intensity. For Coach Easterday, it comes down to no turnovers and, and shot selection, and, and uh, I like what they did for a brief period of time where they played Trinity Lindblade uh, off the ball and had uh, either Gracie Wilson or, or Emma Bowers running the point, and what that enabled the uh, what that enabled the the Lancers to do is, you know, get those first passes off, get into the uh, offense, which sometimes Lindblade was never letting to get in the offense because uh, no, if she, she felt pressure, she put it up. Yeah, she got she just wanted to either drive the basket or do a couple spin moves and then put the shot up, so that. Like I said, that's a coaching thing that she's got to address her on. And if she does and, and says the importance of it, I think there's not going to be any problem. I still look for – Paige Smith, if she's not tired with the two defenders coming in and out on her, and if she can go 16 minutes and gut it out, she's going to hit shots. She's too good of a player. And so just real quickly, Coach, explain that real quickly. What exactly are they doing on defense? You're saying they're face guarding her, but basically they're playing man-to-man, but they're just never switching, nor are they giving any help off of Paige Smith. Yeah, so they are not – they're playing her blind. So all what they're doing is just looking her right at her number. So wherever she goes, they have no idea if a shot's going up, if it's a pick, if it's a pass. So when they do pick four, they're not switching. They're having Spellman or Wilson go Fight with over them. over the top. Yep, so they get and recover. So then when they, if, they do, if she does get free, then everybody slides in and collapses on her, and they really don't worry about anybody else. And they go, somebody else is going to have to take the shot and beat us other than Paige Smith. So it's actually brilliant, but it's wearing her down coming down coming down a stretch. All right. Well, uh, we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Uh, once again, it scores Lingo Lancer 20, Williamsport Wildcats 13, one half over here in the CMC Championship game on Cool Oldies 1450. This game brought to you by Hawkins Landscaping. The Orioles are gearing up for the start of spring training, according to MASN. Baltimore is still involved with the free agency market and has its eyes on a few major league players. Grapefruit League play opens this weekend when the O's host the Minnesota Twins on Saturday in Sarasota. The Birds are coming off a disappointing season after going 83-79 and and finishing fourth in the AL East. The Nationals set a franchise record on the first full day of spring training. 65 players are participating in camp, which is the largest group ever. Washington begins Grapefruit League games this weekend with a visit to Sarasota. The Nats take on the St. Louis Cardinals Saturday afternoon. The Nationals hope to improve from last year when they finished last in the NL East with a record of 55 and 107. Virginia Tech is 16 and 11 after winning five of its last eight games. The Hokies host Miami tonight. Virginia hopes to improve to 22 and 4 when the Cavaliers visit Boston College tomorrow night. And that's sports. I'm Julio Flores on the Maryland News Network. Here's football legend Howie Long for Skechers Arch Fit Shoes. Do you like comfort? Of course you do. Everyone does. But if you've never tried Arch Fit Shoes from Skechers, you're missing out on next level comfort. Saying you like comfort but not trying Arch Fit is like saying you like Italian food but you've never tried pasta. You're missing out on the number one thing. Because with Arch Fit, Skechers created a whole new kind of comfort. They teamed up with podiatrists who used over 20 years of data to create a shoe that provides total foot and arch support for all day comfort. Arch Fit distributes support across the arch no matter what foot type you have. You don't need an arch problem to love how they feel. And you say you have a passion for comfort but haven't tried them? That's like saying you're a sports fan but have never watched football. It makes no sense. So if you're the kind of person who claims to like comfort, stop what you're doing and try a pair of Arch Fit exclusively from Skechers. Then you'll finally understand true comfort. See all the styles of comfortable, machine-washable Arch Fit shoes now at Skechers.com. 
Here's your local news for the cool oldies 1450 listening area. The town of Thurmont is caught between a rock and a hard place. The Rock is the First Amendment, and the Hard Place is their social media platform, specifically Facebook. The town of Thurmont operates a Facebook social media page and is considering either closing or moderating comments to their page. The town asserts that its intention is not to stifle dissent or criticism, but to remove vulgar or threatening comments that have no place in a public forum. There will be a public discussion held on the proposal before a ruling is passed. In other news, the town of Walkersville just loves elections. A special election was held on February the 13th to fill the seat of ousted town council member Michael McNeish last fall. McNeish was re-elected to his seat by the voters. During the run-up to the election, Commissioner Michael Bailey announced that he was resigning because he and his family were moving to North Carolina. The town had several options available to fill his seat, one of which was to select the second highest vote-getter in the special election and appoint them to the vacant seat. Walkersville instead decided to hold a whole new election with new candidates, new applications, and a new date. The new election is scheduled for April 18th. Candidates have until 4.30 p.m. on March 20th to submit their applications for election. Keep it tuned right here for late-breaking news, weather, and traffic on Cool Oldies 1450 THU. All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are back at BB&T Arena. This is Cool, 1450, uh, cool Oldies 1450. Um, CMC Championship game brought to you by Hawkins Landscaping. Mike Reinick along with Coach Brian Burdett, Michael Betteridge, and we're going to bring you the second half. Lancer's ball to start. Tristan Colburn triggers into Trinity Lindblade. Lindblade, uh, not a lot of movement by the Lancers, trying to go down low to Meg Hummel. Meg Hummel goes up and under. Gets a nice defense by Weaver. Ball goes out of bounds off of it. I thought it was off Colburn, but they're going to give it to the Lancers. Sorry, that was Emerson Shank with the nice defense. Just kept her vertical position. Lynn Blade going to trigger. Looking to go. Inbounds to Tristan Colburn. Drives down the lane. She gets bumped. Scoops it up and in. That could have easily been a foul. Absolutely. Quickly out to the other end come the Wildcats. Paige Smith looking to get to the basket like you said she should. Kicks it back out to Lavasseur. Going to go to Robbins for the short jumper. No good. Rebound comes down to Tristan Colburn, who gets a Trinity Lindblade. 22-13 Lancers. 7.22 remaining. Lindblade guarded by Lavasseur. Goes to number 10, Gracie Wilson. Gracie Wilson trying to get it to uh, Jessica Mitchell. Deep shot by Lindblade. No good. Rebound comes down to Robbins. Robbins to the half-court marker. They're trying to set up a uh, uh, motion offense here, sending Lavasseur in the corner. Then they're going to send Paige Smith around, coming to the top of the key. They throw the pass, switch, Meg Hummel takes her. Smith down the lane to the right. Nice drive, goes straight up, gets bumped by Lake. Hummel with the rebound, down to Colburn, who's in the front court. Lancers lead, 24-13. Need a timeout here before this thing gets away. Timeout, Wildcats. Coach Murphy making his case. Paige Smith, he's doing almost exactly what you said we'd do at halftime. Yeah. Paige Smith is going to the basket. She, and she got fouled. Yeah. And she got fouled on that play, and that should have been a call, and that's what he went out and spoke to the referee about. It. Absolutely. But she went to the basket. Um, it was what they needed to do. Linganore, though, if Lynn Blade takes a good shot, shot selection, and just moves the ball around. They're going to score at will. Now this thing has be now become an 11-point game. And now, like I said, now the confidence of Williamsport is rattled. They need a bucket here desperately. Yep. I, I agree. And, and the other thing that's happening on missed shots, they're not keeping floor balance. Linganore's releasing some people. Colburn got a, got a cheap one there where she was over the, over the half-court line at the time of the rebound. And uh, so... You know, they can't send everybody to the board on every shot. They're going to have to make sure they keep floor balance. So we got Smith, Lavasseur, uh, Robbins, Seltzer, and Shank in for the Wildcats. 
Williamsport's out of sorts, though, with the way they're playing them. They just had, it was almost like four, and then Paige Smith is yep. off by, himself, by herself. On, on that previous play, they were all waiting for her to make her cut. Yep. Robbins gets it up to Lavasseur. Top of the key to Shank. Shank fakes, goes to Robbins on the wing. Paige Smith coming off a double screen. They switch. They put Mitchell on the switch. Paige Smith with a very nice pass down low to Seltzer. First basket of the second half. That's what they needed to do. She got dribble presentation. Three defenders came up, dished it easy bucket. Good timeout. That they needed that bucket. Colburn goes to Lindblade, who just throws it away. Robbins into the forecourt. Robbins looking to trigger. She goes to Smith. They switch. Lindblade, they switch and they're switching on everything now. Lavasor is going to go to Paige Smith. Lindblade's on her. She drives to the right. Little head fake. Up and under. Short. Rebound comes down to Shank. Lavasor from the corner. Basket good. Even though Paige Smith isn't scoring, she's creating opportunities. She's dribbling to the basket. I don't know why Linganor is switching now. They didn't do that in the beginning, and now they are, and they've scored two buckets. They score one more bucket. Easter Day is going to have to get a, get a timeout. Lindblade to Gracie Wilson. The Wildcats have gone to a zone. Lindblade with about a 32-foot jump shot off the edge of the rim, out of bounds. Just not what they need. They heard shot selection. I would pull her out and say, we don't need that shot. We can get it any time in this offense, and she's just still firing it away. That was from the timeline. Robbins brings the ball up court. Robbins goes to Shank. Shank to Clues, who's just re-entered to Robbins, they're switching on everything. Robbins is going, goes down low to Clues. Double down on the post, shot up, no good. Rebound to Jessica Mitchell. Mitchell kicks it to Lindblade and here come the Lancers up court. So one thing to note, uh, Coach, college courts are a little bit bigger than high school courts, correct? Absolutely, it's 94 feet, the only one in Frederick County. Is Middletown. Three point shot by Tristan Colburn, 27 17. Quickly up, Williamsport Wildcats. Robbins with the ball. She's working off a Seltzer screen, trying to go to Paige Smith. Wilson face guarding her, throws it in wildly. Ball goes out of bounds and it belongs to the Lancers. That time Paige Smith got caught in the corner and they couldn't get her the ball where she could do anything. Couldn't get the screen offered. Uh, Wilson did a nice job of dictating where she wanted her to go and then they got out of sorts on the offensive end and it just all clogged up. Result, turnover. Weaver and Hudson into the game for the Wildcats. Paige Smith coming out. She's tired. She's going to need a rest. That was something I just remembered that these courts are a little bit, little bit longer in the front court so it makes it harder to... Harder to maybe play an extended defense. Steal by Robbins. Robbins dribbling up. She's kind of got a little globe trotter in her, doesn't she? She can really handle She's the ball. She handles well. She's a good player. She can get to the rack, I think, anytime she wants. Robin on Lindblade. Dribbles. Kicks it outside to Weaver. Weaver. Drive. Clues blocked. Back outside to Shank. Shank to Hudson. Shank drives in the center. It's bodied by Hummel. Traveling call on Mackenzie Clues. Coach Dickman just walked in and had to say the hi, hi to him. The coaching legend of, uh, of uh, Frederick County. We, we, we did that game where in Oakdale won a, a state championship and he had held the uh, previous, last previous men's title. Yeah. Inside to Mitchell, Mitchell makes a nice drop step and she gets kind of sandwiched. I think the foul's on number 22, McKenna Weaver. Jessica Mitchell's going to be shooting two. Quickly into the game, Angel Siampo for uh, uh, the uh, Wildcats. That's her first entry into the game, and Paige Smith is going to return. Well, Coach Dickman held that, held that record for 1998 until Oakdale hit it. It was a long drought for Frederick County. A lot of teams went there. Boys just were never able to capitalize until last season. All right. First shot by Mitchell's good, 28-17. Lancers in the lead. Mitchell's second shot up off the rim, no good. Meg Hummel with the rebound. She kicks it back outside to Mitchell, who tries to drive. Kicks it back out to Lindblade. The Lancers are going to use some time here. They got a full shot clock. Outside to Emma Bowers, and she travels. 
Good call by the official. I thought they were going to miss it, but he was right on it. Three minutes, 10 seconds remaining. Linganore Lancers 28, moving for Wildcats 17. Amelia Roberts brings the ball up. She goes to Paige Smith outside, outside the men's three-point line. Kicks it outside. Robbins gets the ball, tries to drive, is shut off. Goes inside to Ciampo, just in the game. Blocked by Jessica Mitchell. Outlet by Meg Hummel, trying to get it to Bowers. Nice play on the backside. We got people and everything flying everywhere. And that right. ball had went, went off Bowers' foot. It did, right call. They talked about it. Good to see the officials talk about the call and get it right. Main thing is just get it right. Lavasseur is a, uh, she's kind of kind of like the engine that makes it go. She's hustling all over the place for the Wildcats. Robbins to Lavasseur, being guarded by Bowers. Puts it down with her left. Gets help. Inside to Shank. Shank up and under. Nice move, makes the basket. 28-21, 28-19. Bowers brings it up, gets it to Lindblade, a deep three. No good, rebound comes out to Gracie Wilson. Lindblade brings it back out with the reset. Full shot clock in the high school game. Jessica Mitchell gets it, flex cut, run the flex offense. Meg Hummel looking inside. Meg Hummel puts it on the deck. Takes a jump shot from the elbow, no good. Rebound comes down, they're gonna call a foul on uh, uh, Emma Bowers. That's Emma Bowers' second foul. Coach, uh, we've only had two fouls called here in the second half. Big difference, <laughs> referees got together, but the girls have adjusted. It's not as physical, so they're, uh, they, they're laying off a little bit. The only thing is, it's still concerning for me, Linganore's side is Lynn Blade still putting those shots up. That there's gonna come a time that if we keep going in this game, it's gonna bite them. Spellman back in and she gets the job of Paige Smith. Paige Smith with a nice drive, little up and under move and gets her first basket of the game. That might be big for her to get going here now. Bowers brings it up. Williamsport extending the defense way out beyond the three point line. Goes to Spellman on the wing. Inside to Jessica Mitchell. Jessica Mitchell's being bodied up by Emerson Shank. And uh, that's Emerson Shank's second foul. That'll be the second team foul. If I was Coach Murphy, I'd almost play off Lynn Blade a little bit and almost dare to shoot it because he wants to shoot it until she hits one. Yeah, I just to just to bait them and getting early in the shot clock, I can get more possessions and just go, let's just see if she's gonna hit another one. Lancers trigger the inbound. Stolen by Paige Smith. Spellman on her. Paige Smith with the offensive foul. Coach Murphy ex extolling the same thing that you actually were saying in the first half. Like, you just can't, you just got to know when to pull up and just take the short jumper. She did what I believe we saw Tristan Colburn maybe do in the first half, where she came down, the person cut in front of her, but she just kept going, and all she needed to do was let that pressure go. It's a seven point game, 28-21, Lancers lead. 114 left here in the third quarter. Meg Hummel with the back cut to Bowers. Bowers with the layup, nice cut off the flex offense. Wildcats were overplaying, she took the back cut from the wing. Shank at the point guard now. Lavasseur gets it to Paige Smith out at the men's three point line, the college three point line. Smith with a nice dribble move, gets down low. Can't get the basket, but Mitchell with the rebound. Spellman running the point for the Lancers. Spellman to Mitchell. Mitchell to Hummel. Running the flex set. Hummel with the deep three. No good. Gets her own rebound or goes after her own rebound. Does get it. Goes up with the under the basket. Hummel gets another rebound. Gets it back to Bowers. Bowers shot, no good. Rebound finally comes down to the Wildcats. Clues brings it up. Clues to Paige Smith. There's 12 seconds on the game clock for the quarter. Smith drives on Spellman, and she's blocked. Look, it looked like she was getting fouled the whole way down on the drive. She, they didn't call it. They called it on the shot. They're going to call the foul on Jessica Mitchell. That's her third. That's an important foul for the Lancers. 
She was. Pace Smith's taking the ball to hold. The thing is, is I thought Linganor, because they don't go as deep, would be more tired. Williamsport looks more tired, and especially Paige Smith, because I think she's having to work so hard on the offensive end. She's starting to get going here. She's starting to get a couple shots. They're not out of the ball game. It's like I said, it's back to seven points if she hits this shot. But her fatigue is definitely a factor for her now. It's a eight-point game, 30-22. to 22. Paige Smith made the first free throw, her seventh point. Now shooting for her eighth point. No good. Rebound comes down. They're going to give the rebound to Williamsport. This is a big play right here. Williamsport, let's see if they have a set here. Could cut it to five on a three. Make Hummel face guarding Lavasseur. Down low to Paige Smith. Paige Smith with the turnaround. She makes it. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score. The Linganore Lancers, 30. Williamsport Wildcats, 24. We're going to take... We're going to take a quick break here at the end of the third quarter. We'll be back for the exciting conclusion of this CMC Girls Championship game. This is Cool Oldies 1450. forecast for this afternoon a wind advisory in effect through seven o'clock tonight with gusts out of the west to 50 miles per hour a few showers and thunderstorms are possible with highs to 61 increasing clouds tonight low to a breezy 35 with rain showers throughout your wednesday tomorrow's high 49 from the cool oldies 1450 a.m weather center i'm tj on Matt. the go on the radio on your mobile device listen to Cool classic oldies and great high school sports at WTHURadio.com. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back at PB&T Arena. This is Mike Reinick along with Coach Brian Burdett, Michael Betteridge, bringing you the CMC Girls Championship game. Williamsport Wildcats with eight minutes remaining, down by six, 30 to 24. And uh, the Lancers on the defensive end. Lava Sewer. Goes back to Robbins. Gets a pick from Shank to Hudson. Hudson back out. Shank. They're giving Paige Smith a little bit of a break here. Hudson at the three-point line. Pump fakes off her toe, out of bounds, turnover. I like the move of giving her a little bit of a rest, man, to get her going. It's maybe bring her in about the about to six six minute mark. If he needs 6.30 mark, maybe if he can, he's gonna go quicker than that. He gave her about a minute. Lancers in the front court. Gracie Wilson to Meg Hummel to Trinity Lindblade. Gets it down low to Jessica Mitchell. Mitchell gets double teamed. They're going to call a jump ball. I'll tell you what, this Mike, this, this gym is packed. And it, the, the temperature has gone up in here. And you can just feel the electricity for this next game coming. There are no empty seats in this place. And it's going to be, we better grab ours at the end of this. Zeltzer. Back in with Paige Smith. Lancers inbound the ball. Tristan Colburn out at the three-point line. Takes it down the lane, gets bumped, no call. Basket, Tristan Colburn. And there's gonna be a timeout. I'm not sure what the substitution is here. Oh, got hit in the, Lavasseur, got hit in the face. Lavasseur might be bleeding, so yeah. she's gonna come out and uh, Mackenzie Clues into the game. Big basket by Linganore. They needed that. They've been struggling here. They've only hit two of the last couple possessions. Robbins brings the ball down in the front court. Robbins to Clues. Clues to Paige Smith. Outside the men's three-point line. No good. She thought it was good. She started running down the other side of the court. She thought that thing was, was going in. I did, too, from up here at our vantage point. Had good backspin. Looked good, but it was uh, to the left. Trindy Lindblade bringing it up. 6.51 remaining. Lindblade to Colburn. Colburn tries to go into Mitchell. Mitchell gets it, gets double teamed. He's putting it down on the court. Goes to back cut to Colburn. Colburn with, I believe, a double dribble. Yes. So, three fouls on Williamsport, two fouls on Linganor. That's something else to keep an eye on. No one's going to be shooting free throws for a while here. Robbins brings the ball up. 
Paige Smith down on the low block. Gracie Wilson on her. Clues with the ball, looking for the back cut. Back cut goes down, nice move. Oh, a late whistle there. Cam Seltzer went up. Meg Hummel had her hands up. There was contact. Late whistle, foul on Meg Hummel. That's Meg Hummel's third foul. Third foul on the Lancers. Cam Seltzer gonna be shooting two. Came up underneath her. Seltzer with two points on the day. Makes the first, nice soft touch. 32-25, Lancers over the Wildcats. 6.24 remaining. Seltzer with the second free throw. Nice shot, makes it a six point game. Lancers lead down to where it was at the beginning of the third quarter, six points. Trindy Lindblade setting up the flex offense for the Lancers to Jessica Mitchell. They're overplaying that, that elbow pass. Lindblade drives, goes up and is fouled. I think they pointed a foul on the floor, not on the shot. Foul's gonna be on Robbins. No, two oh, shots for Trindy shots. Lindblade. Oh, Emily oh, Robbins. At least she got to the basket that time instead of shooting all those threes and then look what happens. She goes to free throw line when she does that. Makes the first shot. Once again, just like Paige Smith, seeing the ball go through the hoop a couple of times makes a big difference. That's the sixth point on the day for Lindblade. Lindblade has no fouls, played almost the entire game. Makes the second shot. Shank. Inbounds to Robbins. Robbins coming to run the uh, offense. Robbins goes to Paige Smith. Paige Smith getting a pick. Switch by the Lancers. Smith gets the whole way to the basket and scores. It's going to the bucket now every time. Something's going to happen. She's either going to score if, unless Spellman or Wilson are on them, and they're switching now for whatever reason. Lancers with the ball. Meg Hummel drives down the center of the lane. Hummel up to the, all the way to the rim. Basket good, 36-28. Robbins brings it quickly back up court. They get it to Paige Smith at the top. And they are switching on almost everything on that weave offense. Lynn Blade goes down, stolen by Jessica Mitchell. Mitchell going on her own. Mitchell with a crossover at midcourt. Left hand, no good. Rebound comes down to Meg Hummel. Meg Hummel misses it. Meg Hummel with another rebound. Timeout called by Coach Easterday. Great crossover move out front. Got to the basket, just didn't finish, but what a move. 5.07 remaining, 30-second timeout. So let's sort of reset here. It's 36-28, Lancers in the lead. Lancers leading scorer, Tristan Colburn, has 13 points. Leading scorer for... Uh, Williamsport, as we expected, Paige Smith with 11, but 11 is 11 under her yearly average. One thing to keep an eye on here for the Lancers, uh, Coach Burdett, we got Mitchell, Colburn, Hummel, all with three fouls, and Paige Smith is starting to take the ball in the basket as often as she can. Yeah, and so she does that, and they're going to have problems, especially if they keep switching. So her going to the basket, but like I said, on the defensive end, they can't trade baskets with Linganore, and it just looks like, and I didn't think this would be the case, it looks like Williamsport is more tired than Linganore, and I just didn't expect that to be the case. Linganore with the inbounds play. Lynn Blade kicks it out, top of the key to Jessica Mitchell. Mitchell hands it off to Lynn Blade, who's now at the top of the key. She takes a three-pointer. No good, rebound comes down off the hands of Wilson out of bounds. Coach, do you think that the bigger court is having anything to do with that? That's the only thing I can guess, but I, I tell you what, I, there comes a time when a coach and I got to address my player and say, we don't need those threes. Get to the basket and you get two points instead of shooting these threes. It's just frustrating, you know, coming down to end, especially if William Port capitalizes here. Robbins on the drive, up and under, gets by Mitchell and scores. We're a six point game again, 36 30. Four and a half minutes remaining. Trinity Lindblade bringing the ball up, goes to Meg Hummel, flex offense, Lancers. Hummel tries to force it in. Stolen by Paige Smith. Here come the Wildcats. Williamsport's got to get to the basket again. It's worked three, four times in a row. Here goes Paige Smith, she's going. Paige Smith scores. Immediate timeout by Coach Murphy. 4.09 remaining. 
36-32. I think this is a timeout to get his uh, get some of his players some rest, Coach. It's a full timeout. We'll take a quick break. This is Cool Oldies 1450 bringing you the best of Frederick County basketball. It's a 30-second timeout. It's a 30. Sports games are archived and available online at WTHUradio.com in our audio vault. All right, we're back. Uh, cool Oldies 1450 CMC Championship game brought to you by Hawkins Landscaping. Linganore Lancers 36, winning four Wildcats 32, 409 remaining in this, the fourth quarter of the championship game. Trindy Limblade bringing the ball up court. Lancers go with a little different offensive look here. Mitchell drives. Gracie Wilson, Trindy Lindblade, only 15 on the shot clock. Lindblade gets a screen from Mitchell from way outside. Shot is no good. Meg Hummel dives for it out of bounds. Wildcat ball. I was hoping if Coach Easterday would tell her during that timeout not to take those threes, and we just take another one. And it's like I said, and they come down here and capitalize again. Now this game has just really become different on just our shot selection. Paige Smith with the ball. She takes a three from way out. No good. Long rebound. Lava sword there again. She Didn't dribbles need. out. She dribbles out. Holds her pivot foot. Able to get it to Robbins. Got to go the bucket. Page has got to go to the bucket here. Paige Smith goes top of the key to Seltzer. Seltzer to Robbins. Lindblade, they're not switching on the screens now. Gracie Wilson on Paige Smith. Paige Smith backing her down. Makes a shot on the baseline. Two point game, basket good. Paige Smith now up to 15 points. 36-34, Williamsport. They go inside to Meg Hummel. Meg Hummel up and under, basket good. Here come the Wildcats. Linganore's got length underneath. That's what they should have done instead of shooting those threes. Robbins, Smith. Gracie Wilson goes for the steal. Robbins down, blocked by Mitchell. Back up by Smith, no good. Rebound to Gracie Wilson. Wilson bringing the ball up court. And the ball goes out of bounds off the foot of Wilson. Paige Smith's coming out of the game. She's telling, the, asking the coach to take her out. She's tired. Forced that last shot, didn't try to get the bucket. If he's got a timeout left, I'd use one to get her some rest. He did. And now we're gonna have a full timeout. So you saw it, Coach. Paige Smith uh, is gonna get a little break. We're gonna take a break. This is Cool Oldies 1450 bringing you Frederick County basketball. We'll be back in one minute. Running around getting ready for company, visiting friends, or spending time enjoying family. We are all too familiar with a growing list of errands that need our attention. Gary the Barber knows how busy life can get, and so he makes sure that your convenience and a great haircut are first on his list. Call Gary the Barber today. Gary the Barber has hours to accommodate any busy schedule. 301-305-7895. Hey everyone, Gary the Barber is open for business. Just call 301-305-7895 to make an appointment right away. That's 301-305-7895. Get a great haircut today. From BB&T Arena, this is Mike Ronick with Coach Brian Burdett. Cool, 1450... Cool, 14, ah, cool oldies, 1450, bringing you Frederick County basketball. Two minutes left in the girls' championship, a four-point game. Paige Smith has it for Williamsport. She has Meg Hummel on skates, drives into the basket, and is fouled. Get to hit. the basket, what she needed to do, like Coach Murphy's adjustment, telling her to just go to the bucket, forget shooting those threes. Linganore, on the other hand, needs to do the same thing and take advantage of their length. Foul on Meg Hummel, her fourth. Paige Smith to shoot two, fouled in the act of shooting. She misses the first. Fatigue. That's her second miss. I think she Fatigue. missed her last two. 
She's tired. So uh, they're, they're taking out Gracie Wilson, bringing in Tristan Colburn. Colburn, Hummel, Mitchell, Bowers, Lindblade for the Lancers. Smith, Seltzer, Weaver. Missed them both. Rebound comes down to Emma Bowers. Bowers gets it to Lindblade. The Wildcats are going to extend their, their prep, their half-court offense. They go inside to Jessica, Jessica Mitchell. She's immediately double teamed, almost turns it over. Ball ends up in Lindblade's hand with 12 seconds left. Lindblade with Robbins on her. Goes to Meg Hummel. Meg Hummel to Jessica Mitchell. Jessica Mitchell looking to drive. Goes back out to Lindblade. Lindblade with two on the shot clock. It's got to go up. And it goes in. 41-34. Well, that was about a 30-foot jump shot. Hey, that's a hey, Paige Smith drives in, gets fouled. Lindblade threw up that three-pointer. She's been shooting those all night and finally gets her second one to go. And, uh, and uh, we're back, 41-34. Uh, Smith is fouled. I have to apologize. It's Julia Mitchell on the, on the court now. Jessica, her older sister. Smith's next free throw. She makes this one. Six-point game, 41-35. We apologize to Julia and the whole Mitchell family. <laughs> Trinity goes down and hits that three, struggling all night and hits that one, and they needed it. Misses her fourth of her last five free throws, Paige Smith. Six point game, a minute 33 left. Robbins on the foul, that'll be her second foul. They gotta start fouling now. They have two fouls to give, or one foul more to give, with a minute 32 seconds left. Every time there's a uh, foul call, it will reset the shot clock for the Lancers. They'll probably get away with overplaying everything here and coming up with a steal. Robbins with another foul. That will be her third foul. And that's going to send Lindblade, uh, nope, one more to give. 129, only three seconds ran off the clock. Colburn is the inbounder. And Coach Easterday is going to call a timeout. And that's going to be another 60-second timeout. We'll take a quick break here, and then we'll be back for the finale. Cool Oli's 1450 bringing you Frederick County basketball. its reckless actions on children. This is Matt Staver with Freedom's Call. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has added the COVID-19 injection to its routine immunization schedule for children as young as six months of age. This despite the fact that the CDC presented data at a committee meeting on September 1, 2022 that confirms the COVID shots are not safe for children. Under the new CDC guidelines, the agency recommends healthy children six months to 11 years old to receive a primary series of two doses of the mRNA Moderna or Pfizer shot. This means the childhood vaccination schedule would increase the number of recommended injections from 54 to 72 during a person's childhood between six months and 18 years. This irresponsible act will now result in many schools requiring COVID shots for children. Stay informed at Liberty Council's website, lc.org. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back at pb and Arena. Championship game being brought to you by Hawkins Landscaping. Lancers inbound the ball and immediately Emma Bowers is fouled. Emma Bowers will now be shooting one and one. Lancers with a six point lead, 129 on the clock. Lancers are being led by Tristan Colburn with uh, uh, 13 points. Trindy Lindblade with 10. Gracie Wilson will replace Tristan Colburn. Meg Hummel with four fouls for the Lancers. Just uh, Julia Mitchell with four fouls. First shot by Bowers, no good. Meg Hummel with the big rebound. Can't hold on. Goes out of bounds, throws it back in under the basket. Here come the Wildcats. Robbins with the ball. Robbins looking for Paige Smith, being overplayed by Gracie Wilson. Paige Smith gets a pick, three-point shot. No good, rebound comes down to Bowers. Bowers is fouled again and she'll return to the free throw line. That was a wide open look for Paige Smith on that one. Cleanest look she got all night, hit the rim three times, bounced off, she's gotta be frustrated. 
Emma Bowers back at the line, shooting the second one and one. 109 remaining, six point lead for the Lancers. Lancers have Bowers, Hummel, Mitchell, Wilson and Lindblade on the court. No good, rebound comes down to Julia Mitchell. Julia Mitchell kicks it out to Trinity Lindblade and Lindblade is fouled this time by Lavasseur for uh, the Wildcats added their ninth foul, last one and one opportunity, third foul. When you got somebody with length like that on Linganore, they need to squeeze her with Smith in the, in the bottom right. person on the block. And if they squeezed her, then they, she wouldn't be able to get that rebound. Lindblade misses the third, one and one. Ball goes out of bounds and it's awarded to the Lancers. Just a minor adjustment on squeezing the longer player and then still no adjustment on it and they get three rebounds out. And that was Julia Mitchell who was able to force that action. Ball comes in bounds to Gracie Wilson. She's fouled immediately by Paige Smith. See, and he's saying box out, which he's right, box out, but that's not gonna work with that length. So right. if it's just like squeezing a vice together so she can't get around and they're not doing that at all. First shot by Wilson is good. It's a two, two shot penalty. Seven point lead for the Lancers, 102 remaining. For Wilson, that's her fourth point. Gracie Wilson with the second, no good. Rebound comes down to Shank. Shank forward to Robbins. Robbins to Lavasseur. To Smith at the top of the key, a deep one, no good. Rebound, Julia Mitchell. Julia Mitchell holding onto it and is fouled by number 24, Emerson Shank. And coach, I think the Lancers are starting to feel it at this point in time. That's Shank's fourth foul. Seven point lead, shooting two, Julia Mitchell with 47.9 seconds remaining. They hit the free throws, it's, o it's over. Paige Smith fumbled the ball a little bit there, had to rush it, got a clean look coming around and then she was open, but just fumbled the ball. Mitchell's first shot, no good. I think you're seeing a lot of tired legs on both these teams at this point in time. The shooting, uh, yeah. shooting is not going to uh, be uh, very pure at this moment. Julia Mitchell second, up and good. That is her sixth point. Robbins bringing the ball up court. Robbins around the left side. Meg Hummel stops her, Lavasseur drives left, drops it inside to Shank, nice up and under. They call a foul, I'm not sure who the foul's on. It might be on Colburn if that is, that's her fourth. Good move, definitely needed that to go. Four fouls on Tristan Colburn, four fouls on Meg Hummel, 33.1 seconds left. Shooting two is Emerson Shank. She's made that move a couple of times tonight, coach. First shot good. Cuts the lead to 43-36. Robbins coming out of the game because she has four fouls. She'll be back in as soon as the Lancers uh, make their way to the other end, I'm sure, after this. Shank's second free throw. No good, rebound comes down to Tristan Colburn. She's fouled by Paige Smith. Smith's third foul. Two free throws for Tristan Colburn. Seven point lead for the Lancers. The one big three by Lindblade. And if because Linganore is missing her free throws, and if Williamsport hit theirs, this game would start to get tighter. Colburn with a nice looking, nice looking free throw. Not, in fact, she didn't even use a lot of legs on that one, Coach. And again, the second. Nine point lead for the Lancers. Lancers retreat on defense. Robbins in the game, brings it back up. Goes to Lavasseur outside. They go to Paige Smith for the three at the top. Julia, Julia Mitchell outside. Smith with a nice drop step spin move and scores. Timeout, Williamsport, 17.1 seconds left. I just wish she would have done that the whole game and getting that spin move because she's tough to guard even though lingonor has got more length. Unless it's Wilson or Spellman, nobody's been able to check her. So when they see, when she sees that they switch, her eyes should light up and go, well, I'm just taking it every time except for on these two defenders. And then every time she's done that with other people, she's gotten a basket. It just is unfortunate she's kept going with those three-pointers just like Limblade was as well. Yeah, I, I think that uh, uh, whatever whatever change Coach Murphy made at halftime, I mean, as, well, they went from 13 points in the first half to scoring 25 points in the second half, uh, and uh, they've been very very good 
at going to the basket. If they would have made a couple more free throws, we might be looking at a two-possession game right now. As it is, it's a 45-38 lead for the Lancers. Meg Hummel's going to inbound the ball. She gets it to Tristan Colburn, who's fouled immediately by Paige Smith. That's Paige Smith's fourth foul. Smith is sitting at 18 points now after having four at the half. So she's had quite a good second half. 16 seconds left. Colburn made her last two free throws. The difference with Paige, though, like I said, is just getting to the basket. I mean, great players. She's had a great career. Nothing to be ashamed of. Colburn long on the first. This Linganor team should There's be solid. There's six players on the court. There we go. And, uh, Williamsport, there we go. You, I'm sorry, Coach, you were saying this, about Linganore? This Linganore team should be solid again next year, coming back. Only losing uh, jump shot or free throw good by Colburn. Six, eight-point lead for the Lancers. Robbins brings it down. Paige Smith. Paige drives down the lane, blocked by Colburn-Mitchell combination, and a jump ball. Possession arrow belongs to the Wildcats. Four defenders collapsed on her. They weren't going to let her get that layup. Nice move. She can get to the basket at really any time she wants. Down to 5.6 seconds remaining. Robbins to trigger the inbounds. Robbins blocked by Lindblade. Lindblade might dribble this one out. Quick foul on number 34, Mackenzie Cluse. And Trinity Lindblade is going to be shooting two for the Lancers. I don't think the coach wanted to do that. He was a little upset with her. I mean, everybody's, you know, they're waiting for that boys game. Yeah, we're at about 95% capacity here at BB&T Arena. Lindblade's well, first up and good. Yeah, we're getting, uh, it's getting ready to be standing room only. I can see it, uh, you know, on the sides of the, of the entrance, entrance ways in. Lindblade second, also good. 48-38. Robbins gets the ball inbounds, just dribbles it up. And that's the end of the game with the final score of the Linganore Lancers, 48 Williamsport Wildcats, 38. The Linganore Lancers are the CMC champions. As the team exchange uh, handshakes here, Coach, interesting how uh, Coach Easterday's initial defensive uh, scheme in the first half really took the Wildcats out of things and uh, uh, I always think it's interesting to see what the teams and coaches do differently in the second half and without a doubt the uh, Williamsport Wildcats played a much more aggressive second half but they just weren't able to overcome uh, I think maybe all of the energy they expended in the first half to not get much out of it. That, and I think for, for the most part, I think Lingenor's length down underneath bothered them. I think it bothered them down underneath and caused them problems, especially on the help side coming over. All right, so coach, uh, right now the Lancers just received the uh, uh, CMC championship plaque at, at midcourt. Coach Putterman giving that to them. They're gonna get some pictures. So the Lancers' next game will be, well, they're going to get a bye. The playoff brackets have been released. It could be a good one. Frederick Cadets, Tuscarora are going to play in the first round. The winner of that game is going to travel to Linganore High School for uh, a game on February 27th. So uh, congratulations to the Lancers. Their goal is to win uh, uh, regions. For the Williamsport Wildcats, they're the number one seed in the 2A West, and they're awaiting the winner of Poolsville Falcons and the Walkersville Lions. So uh, team, one of those teams they've seen before, and Poolsville plays in the very competitive Montgomery County League. Poolsville coming off a couple of state championships a couple years back. They're always good quality team down there at Poolsville for sure. So congratulations to Coach Easterday and all of the Linganore Lancers on their championship. Uh, it's been, uh, as you said, there was a point in time when Linganore was always on top, and uh, uh, they return to the top of the CMC right now, and let's see how they do in the regional and state playoffs. I think that, I think they'll do well for sure, and like I said, I think they're going to be back again next year. That, that program might be back uh, back to their glory days way, way back, and uh, like I said, with Kara Consuega and Mimi Ritter and, and the Dynamite teams that they had and went on those 50-game uh, plus wins. All right, we're going to take a break here, and...
this is going to conclude our broadcast of the CMC Girls Championship game. I'd like to thank uh, Coach Brian Burdett and uh, Michael Bedridge for allowing me to be here to do this game. Uh, we'll be back in about a half an hour with the boys game. We'd like to thank Hawkins Landscaping for allowing Cool Oldies 1450 to bring you this game and all of the sponsors who allowed uh, us to bring high school basketball to you this season. There's some playoff games that we'll be broadcasting, I'm sure. Come back in about a half an hour. We're going to have a great boys championship. The Walkersville Lions will be taking on the Frederick Cadets. Signing off from BB&T Arena, have a great night. Don't worry if you can't make it to the game or miss the broadcast. All of our high school sports games are archived and available online at WTHU Radio.